I've been waiting to get this shot for years. Look at that. You can see right through the underside of that amphibian. I love frogs. Always have, always will. In fact, I don't think I have ever met a person that didn't love frogs. I mean, what's not to love? So when it comes to finding an incredibly high density of frog species, one of the best places you can visit are the rainforests of Central and South America. On this adventure, the Brave Wilderness team and I are back at the Costa Rican Amphibian Research Reserve, where once again, we will be working alongside world-renowned frog expert, Brian Kubicki. All right, guys, well, we just had an enormous rainstorm push through, which makes it the perfect time to head out into the rainforest and search for amphibians. Now, we're looking for glass frogs tonight. We're not only gonna be looking, we're gonna be using our ears to see if we can hear them first before we spot them with our flashlights. So if you guys are ready, let's head into the darkness and see what we can find. Most species become active at night, so as we headed off into the darkness, it wasn't long before the sounds of frogs were all around us. Now, we had great rain that pushed through, so there's a lot of moisture out tonight, but I noticed so far, we've been searching along the edge of this stream. Is like flowing water the best place to search for glass frogs? Yeah, definitely glass frogs. They're associated with streams and rivers, so what we're gonna be doing tonight We'll be walking along these smaller streams, looking in the vegetation growing on the banks. So we'll kind of, we'll be going along, listening for the calls, and then we'll look according to what the species call from. Okay, well this looks like as good a place as any to get into the water, so you want to lead the way and we'll yep. head upstream to start? Okay. All right, let's go guys, watch your footing coming through here. And of course, keep your eyes peeled for fair to lance. Glass frogs are Brian's specialty. So our goal was to find two species that we could compare side by side. And it wasn't long before we had the first frog of the night in our sights. Let's go ahead and get this one in a little bag here. Got one in my pocket here. We're just gonna use a simple collection bag. This is perfect for storing small amphibians temporarily. We'll bring it right back out onto its leaf tonight. I'll pull this down a little bit. You can maybe, uh, we might as well just... I'll take its leaf too. Take its leaf, yeah. Well, oh. oh, he jumped on here. Gonna put the that shot in mark is right there. You see him hanging off the back side of the leaf. Okay. There we go. Perfect. Oh, he's in the bag before he jumps again. Oh, 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 he's on my hand. Got him in the bag. Hold on, let me come up. See him in there? Yeah. It's on your finger. Oh, he's trying to get out. Other way, buddy. Other way. There we go. Okay, cool. Oh, there he is. Let me see him from the side of the bag. The dwarf glass frog is considered common, so it was almost guaranteed that we would come across this species. Awesome, part one of two. Now we need to find one with a transparent ventral side. Whoa, stay down there, buddy. Okay, let's keep going. However, finding a glass frog with a transparent ventral side was going to be much more challenging, so we headed deeper into the rainforest. Brian's Amphibian Reserve spans over 120 acres of pristine rainforest. It's a labyrinth of disorienting confusion. But the good news for us was that Brian knew every step of it like the back of his hand. Eventually, we made our way up into a small feeder creek, the one place that he was confident that we would find the tiny treasure we had been searching for. Oh, we got right here, Mark. Careful, Mario. It's slick back here. You guys, watch your footing. It's really narrow right here. Oh, man. All right, here, Mark. Let me get up to this spot. Okay. Here, Mario. Can you see it? Yeah, I'm on it. Here is... Can you see him? Yeah. We got him. Nice. That's a little 
That is the green striped glass frog. So now we have the two frog species that we were looking for. Let's get them back in a controlled setting, get them on a piece of glass and up close for the cameras. Yes, this is awesome. All right, guys, careful getting back out of here. Mario, man, yes. Right. With two distinctly different specimens in our possession, we safely made our way out of the rainforest and back to the jungle base camp. All right, guys, and we are back in a controlled setting. Now this is the only good way to get an up close look at the glass frog. And what I have right in front of me here, just coincidentally, is a piece of glass. Now we have sanded down the edges so it isn't sharp and no one's gonna cut themselves. And what we're gonna do is actually place these little itty bitty frogs on the back side of the glass so that we can get a good look at their bellies. All right, now to get this piece of glass to stand upright, I actually have these clamps. And what we're gonna do is secure one gently on that side and another one right over here, like so. And then I have these last two so that it doesn't accidentally wobble and fall over. We're gonna place right up against that edge. There we go, you see that? Now that is locked in place. And we're gonna position this one right there. Cool. Check that out. Now that looks perfect. Can you see through there? I sure can. Now I also have my SOG flashlight, my trusty SOG flashlight, the dark energy. And once we have a frog up on the backside here, I'll be able to do this. Light it up and you'll be able to see right through it. Cool. Now what I also have is this little container of water. And that's because I will be constantly keeping my fingers moist while manipulating the frogs tonight. And this water has been filtered. It is completely safe for the animals. Okay, you guys ready to bring out our stars? Let's see those frogs. All right, I got them right here. Two little Kermits coming in hot. Oh, perfect, look at that shot right there. See the undersides? There is the green stripe and there is the dwarf. Now we'll get the dwarf out first and let's take a look at its top side before we go to the belly. Does that let's sound do good? Yeah. All right, now I am going to use this leaf and try to gently coax the frog out. Now, we have worked with some fragile animals before, but nothing is more delicate than a glass frog. Okay, the dwarf one is right where we want it to be. Oh, on my finger. Okay, let's see if I can see you got an okay shot there? Let me see if I can just get it to hop right up on the glass. Go for it. Perfect, look at that. Like a little sticky green booger. So cool. So tiny too. Look, I will put my thumb right up next to the glass that frog is no bigger than the tip of my thumb. And you can see, go ahead and zoom in on it there, Mark. It's tough for me to see that side. Look at that green coloration. So vibrant, especially under the lights. Now they have, have a lot of personality. <laughs> oh, they really do. And you can see, oh, look at it, looking right towards it. They're very, very intelligent. You can see right now, it's just looking for somewhere to jump next. I'm hoping it's gonna stay right on the glass for us. And you'll notice, the skin is very shiny, right? It's very moist. And look at how big those eyes are. Now one very interesting thing about glass frogs is their eyes rest right on the front of their skull. Now this is a great chance for us to look at this frog's little tiny toes. And they do have a very minimal amount of webbing, especially between the front toes and the back toes. I can actually see the bones in the toes in the light here. That's crazy. And look how they can manipulate the position of their fingers. Look at that, you see how these left two here are turned to the side? And these frogs are not only excellent at jumping, but also at climbing. Here, let's do this real quick. Let's see what happens when I light this frog up. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Point it up at it. There you go. Yep, that's great, right there. Cool. Eagle button. Now, 
Coyote, why are you using the forceps instead of your fingers? Well, those forceps definitely are not absorbing any moisture out of the frog's body. What I don't want to do because my hands are warm is, if I, whoa, all the way over the glass. Do you see that? That was a high jump right there. Oh, on my arm. Okay. Uh, the heat from my skin will actually draw some of the moisture from its body. So that's why I'm using the forceps to keep it in one spot. Okay, here we go. Yeah, yeah, see the behind. We saw the, oh, oh. Yeah, here, watch it. Okay. There we go. Perfect. All right. Now, you can see that the upper half of its ventral side is not completely transparent. And the one that we're going to get out in a second, you can see everything on the inside. But from the back here, I can see the heart beating. I can also see the bones in the legs. And you can see all the pigmentation of the skin. And it's a real great example of why they're named glass frogs. You can see how semi-translucent all the membrane is in this frog's body. And did you guys know this, that Kermit the Frog, the inspiration for the design of that very famous puppet, actually came from the glass frog. And you'll notice, let me see if I can do this. You see how each little toe looks like it has a suction cup on it? And there was a great little move there. You see how they just kind of hop and walk at the same time? And when they're up in the treetop canopy, they're moving around from leaf to leaf, hunting for insects. Now they are little tiny carnivores. They're voracious predators and every single night once it gets dark, they're primarily nocturnal, they are hunting non-stop and a little creature like this can eat bug after bug after bug. So Coyote, we're going to be looking at two species of glass frogs tonight. Yes. How many are here in Costa Rica? Ah, great question. There are actually 14 described species of glass frog here in Costa Rica. Now, the two that we're looking at tonight are rather common, but there's a new one that was just described in 2015. And actually, Brian, who we were out with earlier tonight, he actually discovered that frog he's and the, named he's it. The one who, yeah, he classified He is cool. the glass frog expert. Well, that's why we were out with him tonight to find these two species. And I think at this point, let's get the dwarf glass frog back into the container and bring out the green stripes. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Okay, now let me see if I can just get this guy to jump right up. Perfect. Mr. Van Gogh just jump right inside here. There we go. And... I'm pretty impressed by uh, the jumping ability of these little frogs. Ah, it's crazy, right? Yeah, they, they can really move. There we go. Perfect. Well, I can already tell this one is uh, a lot more translucent. Well, yeah, and look at all of that beautiful speckling on its back. Now, they get the name Green Stripe because, oh, Kermit, come back. Where is he? Right here. He's right here. Frisky little guy. There we go. Now, look at all the beautiful speckling on that frog's back. This one is so unique looking. And they get the name Green Stripe because if you look right down the center of its back, it has a very distinct green stripe. Now you'll notice the eye structure on this one is a little different. The eyes actually look a little smaller and the pupil is a little wider. Oh, let's bring it back over here. Frisky little frogs. Yeah, they do have mine in their own. That's a bunch of yellow spots all over it. Yeah, it does. That's really cool looking. And you'll notice that the toe structure is also very similar. And just like the dwarf glass frog, this is an arboreal species as well. I just really want to try to get it backed up in the center of the glass here. Okay. Okay. That's a great spot. Now it's got this entire glass to work its way up. And I love that, how they just keep their bodies slightly off of the leaf. And again, that ability to not only hop, but also hop and walk at the same time. Now, the green stripe is incredibly rare. This species was only rediscovered in 2004. And dating back to 1952, between 52 and 2004, there were only four of these that were found. Isn't that pretty crazy? This is a very, very rare amphibian for us to be looking at tonight. And he's back down on the table. Let's go back up on the glass. There you go. Uh, the only way that we were able to locate one of these frogs was being out there tonight with Brian and his expertise for not only being able to hear these frogs, but then also being able to spot them in the wild is unlike anything. He is truly the glass frog expert. All right, now the top side is very impressive. The speckling and the green stripe and those big eyes. But 
I know what you guys are waiting for is to see the ventral side where we can actually see those internal working organs. Oh, yeah. Should we bring it around? I've been waiting to get this shot for years. <sighs> All right, let me delicately get it back onto this leaf. There we go. That's good. And get ready for it. Here comes the jump and the reveal. Look at that. You can see right through the underside of that amphibian. All right, let me. Oh no, you need it. Oh, where are you going? That's a cool shot. It's really cool. Hold on, I'm gonna bring it back down here. I don't want it to jump off and onto your camera. Okay, I'm gonna get back down here. I'm gonna actually give it a little dip of water here. Since we've got it off the glass, there you go, buddy. All right. Here we go, here comes the hop. Oh, they're so incredibly lightweight. Oh, there's a great shot of the leg there. Oh, and tucked it back in. And see when I get the light right up to the leg, you can see right through it. You can see the skeletal structure. You can see the insides. Oh, that's so cool. Coyote, I gotta tell you what I'm seeing here. I'm actually looking at the heart filling and pumping blood. You can actually see the blood moving in and out of the heart. That is so cool. You can see some of the arteries through there, can't you? Oh yeah. Can you see on the back side of the leg? I can yeah. kind of see some through on, on this you, side. You can see the whole digestive system. You can see all the vascular system. You can see it all. You can see everything. I would say out of any of the amphibians we have ever filmed, this has got to be the coolest. Look at that. Right there is the most quintessential textbook shot you can get of a glass frog. Man, I've been waiting to shoot this for so long. This is so cool. Well, we have been to Costa Rica many times and now we finally have the opportunity to work with a glass frog that has a completely transparent ventral side. Now this one here is a male. And what's really interesting about this species is that the males actually take care of and look after the eggs. Now they oftentimes will lay their egg masses on low hanging leaves near flowing water. And when those eggs hatch, the tadpoles drop down into the water and that cycle will repeat. Now let's look at the size of this frog. I'm gonna hold my thumb up right there. It is no bigger than a thumb. And this frog is full grown. Now the largest glass frog species here in Costa Rica only grows to be about three centimeters in length. But there is one in South America that grows quite a bit larger if 8.4 centimeters is larger. I mean, it's certainly nothing like the smoky jungle frogs that we've come across here or the bullfrogs that we've seen in the States. But doesn't matter. Size is not everything when it comes to being adorable because this frog is absolutely the cutest amphibian I think I have ever seen. Wow, this was so cool. Well, it's taken us several trips to Costa Rica, but we finally managed to get the tiny glass frog up close for the cameras. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Working with amphibians is a difficult balance as these fragile creatures must always be handled with incredible care to ensure their well-being. Under Brian's guidance and expertise, we managed to not only get the images we needed, but also safely release the frogs back into the same locations where we had found them. If you would like the chance to see some of these amazing rainforest animals in the wild, make sure to visit the Costa Rican Amphibian Research Reserve's website to book your adventure today. If you thought the glass frog was fascinating, make sure to go back and watch our first collaboration with Brian where we got the incredibly rare lemur leaf frog up close for the cameras. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.